Praise the Lord. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time and glad to hear all these wonderful testimonies. And I just thought of this, this chapter over here in the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians that a lot of people call the love chapter. Uh, and I just wanted to read it if it'd be all right. And it says, Though I speak the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have my charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have my charity, it profits me nothing. Charity suffered long, and it's time. Charity envieth not. Charity vomiteth not itself, is not puffed up, do not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth, beareth all things, Beareth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as I also am known. And now about it, faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. The divine nature of Christ. That even though I can do all of these things, but if I have not love, it profit me nothing. And I'm not talking about just loving those ones that love their own. Everybody can just love their own. But to love the ones that are unlovable. Love them. The divine nature of Christ. That's what we're endeavoring to be like. To be like Christ. To love like Christ. And one thing that the scripture says. By this one sign shall all men know that ye are my disciples. That you have love one towards another. And I am never endeavoring to have that love towards my brother. Towards my sister. Because you know what saints? If we have not love or have not charity, we're really missing. We're missing. We are really missing. And you know one thing I can honestly say that I didn't know what they taught here. I didn't know what they preached here. But Grandma, when I come through those doors and I met some of the people, I felt the love from the people. I never knew about a Shea Mountain. I never knew about a Body Joe Mountain. I never knew about a Sister Nelda Mountain. But you know one thing? I felt the love from the people of God. And I felt the love. And I said to myself that I began to come more and more. I found that people who cares. Don't you know, saints of God, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And if we can't do anything, we ought to show people the love of Christ. Because as somebody said in one of our services, I don't remember who said it, sometimes the only Bible people see is the very lives we live. And we ought to be this of Christ. We ought to be Christians. We ought to be Christ-like. We ought to be like Christ. That's it. And one thing I know, that when people was around Jesus, I know they felt a love that was emanating from him. His very nature, his very being, I know they had to feel that love. And the saints of God, it is very, very important for us to have charity and have love. And y'all hear me read it? Does not vomit itself. It's not puffed up. 
does not behave itself unseemly. And saints, we cannot do this on our own root strength and awkwardness, but it takes the Lord to work on us. It takes the Lord to work on us. We sometimes, I say, Lord, God, help me. I feel like I'm not growing enough. Oh, God, help me to put away these childish things and to grow up. Because I'll tell you one thing, saints of God, that if we're going to make the Christ, we're going to be hurt, hurt, and hurtable. But we've got to have love and charity toward our brother and toward our sister. Oh, God, help us. Help us. And you know what, saints of God? Even though those ones have wronged us, ridiculed us, talked about us, we still got the love. We've got the love. Even though those ones that stand their lives in our name, even though those ones that may have talked about our pastor, may have talked about our first lady, may have talked about us, we've got the love, saints of God. We've got the love. We cannot stoop down to that level when we're slinging and throwing mud. But we've got to love our brothers and our sisters because God has commanded us that we love. We've got to do that. And God help us to grow up in you. I want to be a full Christian. I want to be true blue all the way through. And most of all, out of all of the things, I want to have love. I want to have love. And you know, sometimes people make it hard to love. But you know what? I was one of those people at one time where I was just so aggravated with my life, it was hard to love me. But I thank God that he hasn't thrown me away. He hasn't thrown me away today. And so I appreciate the Lord this morning, and I love the Lord this morning, and I love our little church. And you know what, saints? I was just thinking, the other last night, I was thinking, when the Lord moved in so wonderfully, he moved in so wonderful. I was thinking, Lord God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for just moving in. It lets me know from time to time when God moves in like that, that he hadn't forgotten about us here over here on Missouri Street. That he still loves us. He still loves us. And we want to just keep moving on and keep moving forward. Because I'll tell you what, saints, when you see things and you look at things, <coughs> you may not know, but God does. A lot of people looked at little David and they thought, ah, oh, surely he couldn't be a king. Surely he couldn't be a king. Surely his brothers was the one. But you know what, saints? Man looks on the outside, but God, he looks at the heart. And you people here, y'all got a heart of gold. And I thank God for being a part of this people here, of the body of Christ. And I can truly say that I have found the people who care. Because I'll tell you what, I've been in some predicaments, I've been in some situations, and I have nothing but felt love from the people of God. From this man behind me, he showed me love, showed me kindness. He's been a father to me. And I thank God for the man of God that would really, really, really love me. And not only say with lip service, but I could feel that love emanating from him. And I thank God for that. And I'm so blessed, so blessed to be a part of this church here at Saxon. I'm so blessed. And I said, Lord God, thank you. And you know what? I thank God for this group here. When people start to come around, that's one thing that they want to notice about us. Man, this is a group that loves one another, and they love people. They love people. There's been many of people that have come, and they've said something to the pastor. He's related to them that how the people had love, how the people had love that was so friendly, so courteous. And you know what? That doesn't happen by, by uh, <laughs> happenstance. That doesn't happen by mistake. But we're trying to be like Christ. We're trying to get the word of God and apply it to our hearts. God, help us to change and help us to love our brother and our sister. And I told people all the time, I said, I go to church on 228 Missouri Street. I said, you're more than welcome to come. I said, because we'll treat you so many different ways that you're bound to like one. So God bless y'all today.